comes out to be 8.0. As the value of the reaction quotient is smaller than the equilibrium constant, the reaction proceeds in the forward direction. It means that more of gaseous hydrogen and iodine react to form the product hydrogen iodide. Let us now look at how equilibrium constant helps in calculating equilibrium concentrations. For this, let's consider a problem. Mix 2 moles of hydrogen and 3 moles of iodine together in a 1 litre closed vessel. It retains equilibrium at 440 Kelvin. Calculate the composition of the mixture at equilibrium given that the value of Kc for the reaction at 440 Kelvin is 0 0.02. The first step in calculating equilibrium concentrations involves writing a balanced equation for the reaction, like this. The second step is to set up a table describing the initial concentration, change in concentration on going to equilibrium and equilibrium concentration. The second step can be easily remembered in the form of ICE chart, where I stands for the initial concentrations or pressures for each species in the reaction mixture. C represents the change in the concentrations or pressures for each species as the system moves towards equilibrium. E represents the equilibrium concentrations or pressures of each species when the system is in a state of equilibrium. In constructing the table, use X to show the change in concentrations of the species. Use the stoichiometry of the reaction to determine the concentrations of the other substances in terms of X. The ICE chart for the given problem is the initial concentrations of hydrogen and iodine in the reaction mixture are 2 moles and 3 moles respectively, while it is zero for hydrogen iodide as it is not present at the beginning of the reaction. Let x moles of hydrogen and x moles of iodine combine to give 2 x moles of hydrogen iodide as shown in the balanced equation. At equilibrium, the concentrations of hydrogen, iodine and hydrogen iodide will be 2 minus x, 3 minus x, and 2x, respectively. In the third step, substitute the equilibrium concentrations in the equilibrium equation and solve for x. The equilibrium equation for the reaction is Kc is equal to concentration of hydrogen iodide raised to the power of 2 divided by the product of the concentrations of hydrogen and iodine. On substituting the equilibrium concentrations and the value of the equilibrium constant in the equation, we get 2x square divided by 2 minus x multiplied by 3 minus x is equal to 0 0.02. This is equal to 4x square divided by x square minus 5x plus 6. This can be written as 4x square divided by x square minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 2 divided by 100. On cross multiplying, we get 100 multiplied by 4x square is equal to 2 multiplied by x square minus 5x plus 6. On crossing of 100 with 2, we get 50 multiplied by 4x square is equal to x square minus 5x plus 6. This becomes equal to 
200x square is equal to x square minus 5x plus 6. This equation can be written as 200x square minus x square minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. This becomes equal to 200x square minus x square plus 5x minus 6 is equal to 0. This is equal to 199x square plus 5x minus 6 is equal to 0. This is in the form of a quadratic equation. ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. In this equation, a is equal to 199, b is equal to 5, and c is equal to minus 6. In order to solve x, you must use the formula x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. On substituting the values of a, b and c in the quadratic equation, we get minus 5 plus or minus square root of 5 square minus 4 multiplied by 199 multiplied by minus 6 divided by 2 multiplied by 199. This can be written as minus 5 plus or minus square root of 25 plus 4776 divided by 398. This can be further written as minus 5 plus or minus square root of 4801 divided by 398. The square root of 4801 is 69.28. Hence, the equation can be written as minus 5 plus or minus 69.28 divided by 398. This can be written in two forms. One form is x is equal to minus 5 plus 69.28 divided by 398, which is equal to 0 0.160. The other form is x is equal to minus 5 minus 69.28 divided by 398. This becomes equal to minus 74.28 divided by 398, which is equal to minus 0 0.186. As concentration cannot have a negative value, it is clear that the correct value of x is 0 0.160. The fourth step is to calculate the equilibrium concentrations from the value of x. The initial number of moles of hydrogen is 2. Hence, at equilibrium, the concentration of hydrogen will be 2 minus 0 0.160. This is equal to 1.84 moles per liter. In the case of iodine, the initial number of moles were 3. And hence, the equilibrium concentration would be 3 minus 0 0.160. This is equal to 2.84 moles per liter. And finally, the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen iodide will be equal to 2 multiplied by 0 0.160. This is equal to 0 0.32 moles per liter. Step 5. Check your results by substituting them in the equilibrium equation. On substituting the concentrations of hydrogen, iodine, and hydrogen iodide in the equilibrium equation, we get Kc is equal to 0.32 square divided by 1.84 multiplied by 2.84. On solving this, we get the value of the equilibrium constant as 0.02. This is the same as the given value. 
Hence, the equilibrium concentrations are correct. According to thermodynamics, the knowledge of the sign and magnitude of the free energy change of a chemical reaction allows us to predict its spontaneity at constant temperature and pressure. The change in the Gibbs energy of a chemical reaction can be defined as the difference in the Gibbs energy of the products and that of the reactants. This can be represented as delta G is equal to G of products minus G of reactants. When delta G is equal to zero, it means that the Gibbs energy of the products is equal to the Gibbs energy of the reactants. At this stage, the system is said to have achieved equilibrium. When delta G is positive, it means that the Gibbs energy of the products is greater than the Gibbs energy of the reactants. Hence, the reaction is considered non-spontaneous and proceeds in the backward direction. In other words, the products are converted back into the reactants. When delta G is negative, it means that the Gibbs energy of the products is less than the Gibbs energy of the reactants. This, in turn, means that the reaction can proceed spontaneously with the accomplishment of the network. In other words, the reaction proceeds in the forward direction of formation of the products. Let us now examine the relationship between the equilibrium constant and Gibbs energy. Consider a general reversible reaction, reactants A and B, in equilibrium with C and D. The change in the Gibbs energy of a reaction in which all the reactants and products are in the standard state is known as standard Gibbs energy change which is represented by delta G naught. The relationship between Gibbs energy change, delta G, and standard Gibbs energy change, delta G naught, is given as delta G is equal to delta G naught, plus RT ln Q, where R is the universal constant, T, is absolute temperature and Q is reaction quotient. Since the reaction quotient Q for the reaction is equal to product of the concentrations of the products C and D divided by the product of the concentrations of the reactants A and B the equation can be written as delta G is equal to delta G naught plus RT ln product of concentrations of products C and D divided by product of concentrations of reactants A and B. At equilibrium, when delta G is equal to zero and Q is equal to equilibrium constant Kc, the equation becomes Delta G is equal to delta G naught plus RT ln KC is equal to zero. This can be written as delta G naught is equal to minus RT ln KC or ln KC is equal to minus delta G naught divided by RT. Taking antilog on both the sides, we get KC is equal to e to the power minus delta G naught divided by RT. The reaction spontaneity in terms of the value of delta G naught can be known by using the equation Kc is equal to e to the power of minus delta G naught divided by RT. If delta G naught is less than zero, then the term minus delta G naught divided by RT becomes positive. 
and the value of e to the power of minus delta g naught divided by rt becomes greater than 1. This makes Kc greater than 1. It means that the reaction is spontaneous. Or that the equilibrium composition strongly favors the products. In other words, the reaction proceeds in the former direction to such an extent that it almost goes to completion. If delta G is greater than zero, then the term minus delta G naught divided by RT becomes negative and the value of e to the power of minus delta g naught divided by rt becomes less than 1. This makes Kc less than 1. This means that the reaction is not spontaneous or that the equilibrium composition favors the reactants. In other words, the reaction proceeds in the former direction to a very little extent and only a minute quantity of products is formed. Have you ever wondered why mountaineers carry oxygen cylinders with them while climbing high mountains? You know that hemoglobin, a protein, containing iron in the red blood corpuscles of blood is responsible for the transport of the oxygen to the cells. When human beings or animals inhale oxygen from the atmosphere, it combines with hemoglobin in the blood and forms oxyhemoglobin. Equilibrium exists between oxygen and hemoglobin, which can be represented as Hb plus O2 in equilibrium with HbO2, where Hb stands for hemoglobin. A healthy equilibrium is maintained as long as there is sufficient oxygen in the air. At high altitudes, the air pressure decreases and it becomes difficult to obtain the oxygen needed. This results in a shift of the equilibrium to the left away from the oxygenated hemoglobin. Due to the insufficient supply of oxygen to the body's cells and tissues, a person tends to feel light-headed. Therefore, to shift the equilibrium to the right, towards oxygen, pressurized oxygen has to be introduced from an oxygen tank. Hence, Mountaineers carry oxygen cylinders with them when they climb high mountains. Thus, we can say that if a system at equilibrium is subjected to a change in the concentration in one of the substances, then it no longer remains at equilibrium, and the equilibrium position shifts in the direction in which this change is reduced or nullified. A change in temperature or pressure may also alter the equilibrium. This is the application of an important generalization known as Le Chatelier's principle. The effect of temperature, pressure and concentration on a reversible reaction in equilibrium was predicted qualitatively by Le Chatelier. He gave a principle which is now known as Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle may be stated as if a system at equilibrium is subjected to a change in the temperature, pressure or concentration of the reactants or the products that govern the equilibrium, then the equilibrium position shifts in the direction in which this change is reduced or nullified. The factors that influence equilibrium are concentration, pressure, and temperature. Let us learn about the effect of each factor in detail. When a system at equilibrium is disturbed by the addition 
or removal of any reactant or product. Le Chatelier's principle predicts that the position of equilibrium shifts in the direction in which this change is reduced or nullified. The effect of change in the concentration of the products and reactants can be readily known through an experiment. In a beaker, take 20 ml aqueous solution of 0.2 molar iron 3 nitrate. It is pale yellow in color. When 5 ml aqueous solution of 0.002 molar potassium thiocyanate is added to it, the color of the solution changes from pale yellow to red. This is due to the formation of thiocyanate ion 3 ions. The intensity of the red color becomes constant after some time, which indicates the attainment of equilibrium. The equilibrium mixture contains aqueous Fe plus 3 ions, aqueous SCN minus ions, and aqueous Fe SCN plus 2 ions. The equilibrium constant Kc for this reaction can be written as Kc is equal to concentration of Fe SCN plus 2 divided by the product of concentrations of Fe plus 3 and SCN minus. You have already learned that at equilibrium reaction quotient Qc becomes equal to equilibrium constant Kc. Hence you can write QC is equal to KC at equilibrium. To understand the effect of change in concentration on equilibrium, let us consider some cases. Adding the reactants, Fe plus 3 or SCN minus ions to the equilibrium mixture. Removing the reactants, Fe plus 3 or SCN minus ions from the equilibrium mixture. Adding the product FESCN plus 2 ions to the equilibrium mixture. Removing the product FESCN plus 2 ions from the equilibrium mixture. Case 1. Adding the reactants Fe plus 3 or SCN minus ions to the equilibrium mixture. Suppose you add a few ml of a solution containing soluble Fe plus 3 or SCN minus ions to the equilibrium mixture. You can see that the color of the solution becomes darker. The reaction quotient at this stage of the reaction is given by QC is equal to concentration of Fe SCN plus 2 divided by the product of concentration of Fe plus 3 and SCN minus ions. On the addition of Fe plus 3 or SCN minus ions to the equilibrium mixture, the denominator value in the expression for reaction quotient increases. This results in a decrease in the value of the reaction quotient. Now, the value of QC becomes less than KC. You have already studied that when QC is less than KC, the reaction proceeds in the direction of formation of products. That means, the reaction proceeds towards the formation of FESCN plus 2 ions. This is the reason why the solution becomes dark on the addition of more Fe plus 3 or SCN minus ions. Hence, in general, we can say that increasing the concentration of any one of the reactants always favors the forward reaction. Case 2. Removing the reactants Fe plus 3 or SCN minus ions from the equilibrium mixture. 
Now, suppose you add a few ml of oxalic acid to the reaction mixture at equilibrium. You can see that the intensity of the red color of the solution decreases and the solution turns pale. Why does this happen? Oxalic acid reacts with Fe plus 3 ions in the equilibrium mixture and forms a stable complex trioxalate ferrate 3 ion. Due to this, there is a decrease in the concentration of free Fe plus 3 ions in the solution. This results in a decrease in the denominator value in the expression for reaction quotient. Thus, the value of Qc becomes greater than Kc. When Qc is greater than Kc, the reaction proceeds in backward direction. Hence, FeSCN plus 2 ions undergo dissociation to give Fe plus 3 and SCN minus ions. Due to the decrease in the concentration of FeSCN plus 2, the intensity of the red color decreases. Thus, we can conclude that removing or decreasing the concentration of any one of the reactants always favors the backward reaction. Case 3 Adding the product FeSCN plus 2 complex ions to the equilibrium mixture. On adding FeSCN plus 2 complex ions to the reaction mixture, the value of the numerator increases in the expression for reaction quotient. Thus, you can say that adding a product to the equilibrium mixture results in the backward reaction. This results in Qc becoming greater than Kc. Hence, the backward reaction that is, the dissociation of FeSCN plus 2 ions into Fe plus 3 and SCN minus ions takes place. Case 4. Removing the product FeSCN plus 2 ions from the equilibrium mixture. On removing FeSCN plus 2 ions from the equilibrium mixture. The value of the numerator in the equation for reaction quotient decreases. This results in Qc becoming less than Kc. Hence, the forward reaction of Fe plus 3 and SCN minus ions combining to give Fe SCN plus 2 takes place. Thus, you can conclude that removing a product from the equilibrium mixture results in the forward reaction. From the experiment, we can summarize that the addition of reactants or the removal of products favors the forward reaction, while the removal of reactants or the addition of products favors backward reaction. The ability to predict the effect of change in concentration has great commercial application in the cases of reactions where the product is a gas or a volatile substance. Here are two examples. In the manufacture of ammonia by Haber's process, high yield of ammonia is favored by the addition of the reactants nitrogen or hydrogen or the removal of the product ammonia from the reaction mixture. In the large-scale production of calcium oxide, which is used as an important building material from calcium carbonate, carbon dioxide is constantly removed from the kin, which drives the reaction to completion. Let us now study the effect of pressure change on a system at equilibrium. According to the Le Chatelier's principle, when a system at equilibrium is subjected to change in pressure, then the system tends to shift the equilibrium position 
in such a direction that the effect is nullified. You know that the pressure of a gas is directly proportional to number of moles of the gas. Hence, the effect of pressure can be easily understood by considering the change in the number of moles between the products and the reactants. This can be made clear by studying three cases. Case 1 When the number of moles of the reactants is greater than the number of moles of the products. Case 2 When the number of moles of the products is greater than the number of moles of reactants. Case 3 When the number of moles of the reactants is equal to the number of moles of the products. Case 1 When the number of moles of the reactants is greater than the number of moles of the products. Consider the gas phase reaction N2 plus 3H2 in equilibrium with 2NH3. In this reaction, 4 moles of gaseous reactants, 1 mole of nitrogen and 3 moles of hydrogen become 2 moles of the gaseous product, ammonia. Suppose the equilibrium mixture is kept in a cylinder fitted with a piston at constant temperature and is compressed to one half of its original volume. As the volume decreases to half, the pressure will be doubled according to the equation PV is equal to constant. As the pressure is doubled, according to Le Chatelier's principle, the equilibrium shifts in the direction of decrease in pressure or the number of moles of the gas. So, in this case, the reaction proceeds towards the formation of the product, ammonia. If you decrease the pressure on this equilibrium, the equilibrium shifts in the direction of the increase in the number of moles of the gas. Hence, ammonia undergoes dissociation to give back nitrogen and hydrogen. Case 2, when the number of moles of the products is greater than the number of moles of the reactants. Consider the gas phase reaction PCL5 in equilibrium with PCL3 and Cl2. What happens when pressure is increased on this equilibrium? In this reaction, the number of moles of gas increases in the forward direction. Hence, as the pressure increases, the equilibrium shifts in the backward direction, which involves fewer moles of gas. Case 3. When the number of moles of the reactants is equal to the number of moles of the products. Consider the gaseous reaction H2 plus I2 in equilibrium with HI. You can see that in this reaction, the number of moles of the reactants and the products are the same, which is 2. As there is no change in the number of moles of the products or the reactants, pressure does not have any effect on the equilibrium. The effect of pressure is important only on those equilibria that involve gaseous substances and not on equilibria that involve liquid and solid phases. This is because the volume and concentration of a solution or liquid is almost independent of pressure. For example, pressure has no effect on the equilibrium reaction between solid zinc and aqueous copper sulfate to give zinc sulfate and copper, which involves only solid and liquid phases. Now, here is an interesting question for you. 
plus the addition of an inert gas into a gas phase equilibrium at constant volume result in a shift in the equilibrium. If the volume is kept constant and an inert gas such as helium or argon that does not take part in the reaction is added. Then the equilibrium remains undisturbed. This is because the addition of a known reactive gas does not change the partial pressure of the other gases in the container.